In this tutorial we're going to be looking at more advanced concepts in repetition using Scratch. In the previous tutorial I looked at the two simplest repetition structures which are the forever loop and the repeat a certain number of times loop. There are more advanced structures, I'm going to look at two of those today and those are forever if and the other structure is repeat until. And these structures are actually very simple to each other and I'll actually be using each of them to explain the other. Um, I guess the other thing that I want to point out to you is that the forever if and the if obviously sound quite similar. The difference is that the if statement, actually I think we'll talk about it together, the if statement checks a condition which is this kind of diamond shape. It checks this condition and then if that condition is true then it executes what's inside the if statement once. The forever if is just like an if statement in the sense that it checks this condition but it keeps checking this condition every time it keeps looping around that's what this little arrow indicates it loops back to the beginning checks this condition again and while that condition is true it's going to execute whatever is inside uh, inside the code block. So let's look at those two together uh, and, and see how they compare to each other, basically doing the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a variable and I'll call that variable count. And I'm going to start off with count set to zero and that's already the case. We can see that up on the stage. And then I'm going to say, okay, set count to zero if, and I'm going to check, I'm going to do a simple comparison. If count is greater than the number, well, let's pick something fairly simple. How about five? So if count is greater than five, actually, sorry, let's, uh, let's change this. We're going to say if count is less than five. So if count is less than five, then I'm going to uh, say something. So I'm going to say the count is, and actually I think I'd like to actually say what it is. So I'm going to I'm going to join that together, make something a little bit more meaningful here. So the count is. and then I'm going to take the variable count and I'm actually going to tell the user what the count is and then I want this to take place at a reasonable pace so I'm going to put a one second delay at the end of each of these so that it uh, so that we can actually watch it take place and I guess the last thing I need to do is um, I'm going to change count by one so I'm going to increase the count value by one and then wait one second. Now, the wait one second doesn't actually do anything in this code block, but so I've set count to, to zero, and now if I run this code block on its own, um, and I'll explain why I'm doing it this way, if I run this code block on its own, well, we should be able to compare this. We'll be able to do this in our heads. So count is currently zero. So is count less than five? Is zero less than five? Yes, it is. If I double click on that, it's true. So what should happen is it should tell me the count is zero and then it's going to increase count by one and then it's going to wait one second. So there we go. Count is one and it said the count is zero because of course that's already taken place. Now, if I double click on this again, well, count has changed. Count is now, is now one, but one is still less than five. So if I double click on this again, count changes to two, then it changes, I actually, I think I'd like to change the order of this. It will make a little bit more sense if I put it this way. So the count is currently three. If I double click on this, count changes to four. It says count is four. I double click on this, count changes to five, the count is five. And now we ask ourselves, is, is five less than five? And the answer to that is actually false. Five is not less than five. And so when I double click on this again, you can see nothing's changing. Count is stuck at five. It's still saying the count is five. And no matter how much I click on this, it doesn't progress. 
because it's failing this condition if count is less than 5. Now let's do the exact same thing as part of our loop and you'll see that we're going to get the exact same result the only difference is that in this case it's going to not require me to sit there and madly click on the if statement so I'm going to set count back to zero independently I just want to make sure that we're starting from where we were before but that was going to happen anyway now I can actually connect these together in a single block and say set count to be zero that's the first thing that's going to happen and then it's going to count upward so I run that it says count is one two three four five and when it reaches five the code block ends because this condition is no longer true now the interesting thing here is because this is a forever loop you can see this whole structure is still outlined technically it's still executing because a forever if is going to keep running forever whether this is true or false it's going to keep running and so when you put a forever if into your program look at the bottom here notice that there's nowhere at the bottom for you to put something like a stop script that does not attach to the bottom it'll attach to the bottom of the inner part but there's no way to attach this to the bottom of the forever if so you have to understand that when you use a forever if it is never going to leave that loop the same thing is true of the forever notice it's smooth on the bottom it's never going to leave that loop unless you stop it manually unless you hit the the stop sign now let's look at the same thing with repeat until so repeat until is kind of the uh, reverse condition so in our forever if here we were we were waiting until count basically we kept executing this while count was a number less than five the repeat until says I want you to do these things until the count gets to, or until the condition is is met so this says repeat until some condition is met now if I say repeat until count is equal to is repeat until count is less than five if I put that in there and go ahead and try to run this then the problem I'm going to run into is the first thing that will happen is count is set to zero is is zero less than five yes that's true so this says repeat until true so it should stop this one should actually do nothing and if I go ahead and double click on it I know we've still got this statement the cat is still saying something from the last time through but otherwise nothing is happening what we actually need to do is the opposite of count less than five because we want to keep repeating this loop until something tells us it's time to stop and so the condition that we would actually want it's not count greater than five when you think about it what's the opposite to count less than five the opposite to that in this case is greater than or equal to five so I'm going to get my or operator and I'm going to get an equals operator get my variable and this is something we've covered in another tutorial so I'm going to say count is greater than five or count is equal to five and then I'm going to drop that in here for my condition so I'm going to repeat until count is greater than five or count is equal to five and if I go ahead and run this now count is one two three four and five so you can see that the forever if and the repeat until are actually quite similar to each other but the repeat until is actually a much more powerful and useful structure and the reason is because with the repeat until you can actually add more code blocks to the end of your program so this one will repeat until this is done and then you can move on and ask more pieces to your pro and add more pieces to your program if you use the forever if that's it that's your whole program has to be inside the forever if so it's actually a little bit simpler but it's quite a bit less useful so keep that in mind when you're thinking of adding loops based on conditions 
in your program. 